Well, before we hopped on here, you mentioned that you know you feel old on the team because you're, <laughs> you're a junior. Yeah. But you do have that experience. Has mm-hmm. there been anything that you've experienced uh, maybe during when you, the summertime quarantine that has helped you get through this? Or do you find yourself maybe even helping others uh, who have never even been on campus before and now they're dealing with something completely different? Um, I kind of have like tried to get into like an re- exercise routine. Um, over the summer, like I probably went to the gym like at least four times a week um, in addition to work and stuff. So kind of just making sure that at least I'm getting out of the house doing something, um, even if it's just going for a walk up on the track or if I go down to wake and lift or anything like that, because that for me helps like mentally a lot just to like reset my brain. Um, But yeah, that's kind of a routine that I've carried over since the summer is making sure to get out and doing some sort of physical activity every day. Well, speaking of the summer, let's go back and uh, talk about what we originally had planned on speaking about, and that is the, the Social Hornets Initiative. Uh, mm-hmm. Not the social in which you think of. It's S-E-W-C-I-A-L for sewing. And, of course, if you uh, or anybody listening to this and you follow Lynchburg or Lynchburg Sports, you know that there was an initiative put forth by our new president, Allison morrison Shetler to make 10,000 masks that would be distributed to faculty, staff, students, uh, everyone that would need one, maybe even two per person and so on and so forth. So that's a little bit of the background of the initiative. Tell us about your part of that. What did you participate in? So they, I think around like the early of July, they sent me fabric and materials to make these masks. So my mom, like, taught me how to sew she knew how to sew in the sewing machine so she was the one who kind of taught me and there's a really big learning curve because I've never like really done anything like that before so I made I didn't make as many as some of the other people in the group like some people made hundreds and I only made probably like 20 or so because I like really was struggling (laughs) but I ended up making a I mean, at least 20. So, I mean, that's 20 students or faculty that have masks now. Um, but I will say it was it was, it was was pretty hard for me to learn. And I messed up a couple. I almost broke my mom's sewing machine. She was not happy at me for that one. But we fixed it, and it was fine. But there was it was it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, honestly. So, But the way to sell it is that <laughs> – quantity wasn't there but the quality was there yes. those 20 yes. that you made cool. are really good yes i would agree the 20 that i made were pretty good i didn't send any of my mess ups in but <laughs> you know i mean she really helped me a lot i mean she was still working too but she helped when she could and then um yeah my grandmother helped me too some with like troubleshooting <laughs> so it was a family affair so you, you said they sent the fabric to you did mm-hmm. you volunteer how, did, how what was that process like or they just um, randomly so send it? <laughs> I like am four hours away so I wasn't able to come down here and pick up anything so I kind of filled out the google form when they sent it out to us and was like I need materials because I would have rather had them sent to me than me have to go out and get them um and at that point I don't know how many stores at home were even open really for that kind of stuff so they sent the fabric that was cut already and they had volunteers that did that down here from the, both the community and like on campus faculty and stuff that cut it for us. And then they sent it to me and then I could just start whenever I wanted. And you had the option of either sending them back um, like in the box on a return like label, or you could just bring them with you when you came to campus, which is what I did. So I just, you know, well, I was planning on bringing them back, but my parents had to send them to me because I forgot them at home. So I, I had to, they sent them to me, but now everybody's getting a second mask. So in the next wave of mask giving, someone probably will have my masks, which is kind of cool to think that like I might see someone on campus with mine. So yeah, I was going to ask like the fabric that they sent you, was it all the same design? So you'll know for <laughs> sure that that's. Well, your- I knew like what mine were. Um, And I, there's actually a picture in the group message, like of what mine looked like. So I knew like what fabric mine was made out of. So I could probably identify it if I saw someone wearing them. So, you know. Are are you going to 
are you going to follow up with like a survey when you and walk up to him and say, Hey, is it working? Are you, are you, I made I don't know. I guess <laughs> maybe I should look into that, you know, send out a Google form to the undergraduates. Hey, any of the 15 people who have my mask. Yeah. How, 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 how did I do? How did I yeah. do? It? Yeah, for on, sure. On a broader scale, where did the inspiration come to actually help? Uh, especially considering you are four hours away, it mm -hmm. could have been very easy to just ignore that. So mm -hmm. where did that come from? Um, I like doing that kind of stuff. Like I've always kind of like been a craftier person. Um, and I was at home a lot because I only worked like four days out of the week. So I used some of my free time here and there to like make them. And also it was like pretty relaxing to me because I would just put on like the TV that was in our like room that the sewing machine was in. And I would just kind of watch TV while I was doing it. Um, so it was it was a lot, like, mentally, it was very nice for me to just sit there and, like, I could just sew. I mean, it was a little loud, but, you know, it was so fun and kind of relaxing to do it. So I enjoyed it. And I knew that it was helping people on campus and it was helping us come back. So I wanted to be here as much as everybody else. And I f felt like, you know, I'm helping the community out just as much as it's helping me by sitting there and doing it. So I really just enjoyed being able to help the community from far away, even if I wasn't here. So you would say it was a bit therapeutic at that time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So do you think that you'll continue sewing? Well, I have a little bit more fabric at home. So I think that I probably could, if when I go home for Christmas, hopefully, I can do a couple more. I don't know if they'll, so they'll probably still be taking them, but I would honestly, like, I would do it again, maybe with a different pattern this time, you know, switch it up. So I, I would honestly like do it again. Um, now that I kind of have like the routine down of like how I did it last time, I'd probably be able to do it quicker now. So I wanted to shift gears to softball mm -hmm. and talk about how things are currently. Um, obviously, we all know, as we've discussed before um, with Carol Oberhelman back in the summer, the disappointment of. Uh, having your season cut short in 2020 spring, but now there's still that hope that there's going to be a spring 2021, mm -hmm. but you can't be with your coaches yet. You can't really do much with coach Smith in the weight room yet. So what are you all doing? How, how are you making sure that it's not just this little click of friends and this little click of friends? Like it's still a team effort to make it better. Yeah. So recently coach has been sending like, us different drills and stuff to do when we go down to the field. I mean, we can only have like six people down there at a time. So I've seen a lot, I've seen a lot of people like going down there. I've gone down there myself um, just to hit in the cage, like kind of get back into the swing of things. Cause it's hard. I mean, you're not able to be with a full team practice, which for at this time of year, we're normally starting soon. Um, but at throwing bullpens, getting ground balls, um, that kind of thing that's like really kind of helping us get back into the swing of things and we try and like hook up with um our big little groups I know some people have done that um but mainly just trying to get down there I've seen a lot of people be that have gone down there to the field so it's nice to see everybody's you know trying to get back into it well when you do get down there what does it look like we don't we're not able to go out there and really cover it if you will so yeah how do you make sure you're still following the uh, guidelines that were set by the school to safely participate in activities so we kind of can't so if there, we go down there we walk down and there's like three or four people on the field and then like two down in like the offensive bullpen area we kind of have to be like okay like this is kind of too many people down here at one time so you might have to come back um or you could, even if Coach Smith says it's okay, you could go into wake and, like, throw a bullpen or something like that. Um, but when I've gone down, it's only been me and, like, one other person. Or as we're leaving, like, two more people are coming in. So it's never really been all of us down there at the same time. But now um, we have to kind of wear our masks when we're down there, even if it's just, like, two people. Um, but when we've been doing front toss, it's it hasn't been that bad because, I mean, it's covered. It's in the shade. So... Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> it, it is important this time of year. Yes, sure. very much so. Um, but I've seen people like 
they've worn their masks like under their catcher's helmet, and I haven't done that yet, but I haven't caught a bullpen yet. So I think the when I go down and catch a pitcher that I'm probably going to do that just to be safe because I don't want to get anybody sick. So Have there been uh, other catchers who have found out that one mask is better than the other over the year or the gator? Does it matter? I like the gator personally for when I'm doing like physical activity. Cause I, I don't, there's a lot going on like in this area, like with the helmet, if I'm wearing like a headband and then the mask. And so I find that the gator works the best. So it's just a little looser. Um, I don't feel as like confined to my, it doesn't, I feel like less restricted, but right. it still does what it needs to do. So you know, I I feel like I prefer that to a lot of the other ones. So yeah, I don't have to wear a helmet, but I prefer that <laughs> as well. Uh, I actually find myself not touching my face as much. Mm-hmm. I have most of it covered up by a cloth, so there's an mm-hmm. added bonus of yeah. I agree. I agree. One of the last things I want to get to, or maybe the last thing, uh, we'll see how your answer goes. Uh, is looking to what happened in the spring. Does it come up in conversation? And if it does, how do you guys use that to motivate yourselves to be better and to be prepared at an even higher level for 2021? So we kind of just talk about how like, hey, like this was taken away from us. Like it's time for us to like go out there and like prove that, you know, we're just as good a team now as we were in the spring, if not better. And it's pushing us to be better. And like you never really know when your last game could be so like Alex and Carol and Commons like we're lucky that we have Hugate back and then the three like juniors that graduated early like that was their they didn't even know it was their last game so like you don't know and we've kind of just been having that mindset of hey like play every game like it's your last because you don't know when you won't be able to play anymore so I mean this is a game we all love so we don't want it to end early so we've kind of that's what's been pushing I think a lot of people is that you know play every game like your last, which is something that's always been in our team philosophy, but it means a lot more now because we, we saw it happen. Like we experienced it and it really sucked. Like it really sucked, especially like that last practice where you see all the seniors and they're like, this is it. So. Yeah. I think we all have realized the cliche that you mentioned play every game like it's your last Mm -hmm. just carries different weight now than it did before because that's usually coming from a senior who's already graduated and you can't quite understand where they're coming from, but now all of us have been affected by it. So mm-hmm. we all, we all get it. So I think that's uh, a very good way to describe it. And you got, you got yourself off the hook. I don't have any more questions. That was <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> so uh, Olivia, thank you so much for your time and your service to yeah. the university as well. Uh, and whether it's at the sewing machine or on the softball field, uh, we look forward to seeing you sometime soon. Yep. Thanks, Joe, for having me on here.